what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? A major drug ring was busted in New York City this week as federal authorities alleged that the drug dealers flaunted their lavish lifestyles on Instagram, funded by drug money. Six men in total were busted on Wednesday, including Luis Lopez, Peter Vasquez, Nestor Rivera, and Victor Agosto, who were arrested in Brooklyn. Over $2 million in cars and drugs alone were seized from the men, including 12 kilos of heroin, valued at $900,000, and a fleet of luxury vehicles. The crew had connections to a Mexican cartel and would funnel the drugs through Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago, according to federal authorities. The fleet of vehicles seized in the bust included a Lamborghini, a Rolls Royce Ghost, a Bentley, an Audi R8 Spider, a Mercedes CLS 63, a Mercedes S550, a Porsche, a Maserati, a Range Rover Sport, and a BMW M4, totaling roughly $1 million. The alleged dealers didn't just buy cars for themselves. They lavished luxury gifts on their babies, young girlfriends, and wives, according to the feds. Among gifts seized, a $3,000 Versace stroller for a defendant's baby. The same defendant also bought his wife a Rolex watch, Chanel handbag, and a Versace dress with the alleged drug funds. These defendants not only moved large amounts of heroin across the country, they carried firearms to protect their turf and extravagant lifestyle, stated NYPD Commissioner James O'Neill. Authorities say one of the defendants relied on a crew of the violent street game, the Young Gunners, also known as the YGs based in Bushwick, Brooklyn, to provide protection of the illicit business. O'Neill added, New Yorkers are safer with this poison off the streets. Each of the men faces a minimum of 10 years in prison if convicted. Easy come, easy go. Probably not a good idea to take a picture of your license plate and post it on IG if you're doing something shady. What's with this new generation, man? What's with it? I keep trying to give these guys a break. And I know there are some great youngsters out there that's doing great things. But damn, it just seems like it's so many damn idiots out there. What's with the showboat, man? There used to be a time when if somebody was doing something shady, they try to keep it to themselves. But these dudes today are telling on themselves. Now, for the people who think that Donald Trump is some smart guy. This right here is proof that money can't buy your class and money can't buy your common sense. Because you and I both know that you got to be some kind of new stupid to be a drug dealer and go out and buy these expensive cars. I'm talking about high end. I'm talking about Rolls Royce Ghost. <laughs> Man, you know somebody going to say, okay, what's going on? What does this guy really do? Most people who are used to having something, they're modest. This is what happens when you have, what, this is what happens all too often when you have people who struggle financially. They ain't used to having nothing. So they flaunt whatever it is that they have for attention to make themselves look more important than what they are. I did it myself, man. When I first started making money, I had to go out and get the drop-top Maserati. And I ain't talking about regular Maserati. I'm talking about the one that they only have like 100 made in the whole country. But after you have money for a while, it kind of gets old. Now, the trick is 
If you're going to do something that you have no business doing to get that money, the trick is trying to catch your snap soon enough before them folks come knocking on your door. And most cats, they're not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. Because when you get to that kind of level like those guys were on, buying cars that cost six figures in excess, in excess of six figures, the feds start looking very, very closely. I mean, those are big attention grabbers. And when you put yourself out there like that, they are going to pay attention. When you go out there and when you know you're doing something wrong and you go out there and buy something fancy with your ill-gotten gains, you're basically saying, look at me. I'm the one who did it. Remember that heist the other day? Look at me. Look at the stuff I got. Look at this coat I got. Look at this watch I'm wearing. Man, this is the bomb. Look at this car. Look at me. Check out the money I'm blowing in the club and I'm throwing it up. Look at me, man. I did it. Look, me, me, me. He didn't do it. I did it. Because that's what you're basically saying. These guys are snitching on themselves. Couldn't get me to do something that stupid. These guys are snitching on themselves and taking the social media. Just in case you didn't know, I did it. Just in case you didn't know. So I guess becoming inconspicuous was not in their vocabulary. Because that is absolutely wild. I wrote a song for the Ghetto Boys called Nothing to Show. And in this song, I said, I ain't trying to knock your hustle, homie. That ain't cool. But get your money, clean it up, and get the fuck on, fool. Because your friends just want to stunt. And these hoes just want your bread. And the feds is on the hunt. And these niggas will blow your head behind B for a fake safe. Dude knew your face, so you murdered him and ain't got nothing to show. So these guys went out here risk their lives, not their freedom, to stunt, to basically just stunt on folks. And the thing is that for people that really got money, you're not really impressing those people because they're looking at how you got it. And they know if you ain't get it the right way, they know you ain't going to have it long. But it's the people that you're trying to stunt on and you don't have it, you're not gonna have the money long. So how long do you have the money? Maybe you get up and you have it for a year. Maybe you have it for five years. Maybe you have it for 10 years. But in almost every single case, when them people come, you're not gonna be prepared. Most of these guys, when they get popped, they don't even have money for the lawyer. They, they need somebody to put money on their, their, their books. If you have any money left over, you got to leave. You got to tell somebody where it's at because you're trying to maintain a lifestyle while you're inside. And you tell that person what's going to happen. They're going to run through your money when you get out. You got to start all over and you got a case. You got this jacket on your back. And however hard you thought life was before you got into the game, it becomes 10 times harder because now you got this jacket on your back and you go out here and now you got to try to work a square job and go out there and make it and you gotta put it on there. You gotta check that box, been convicted of a felon. So it just makes it a whole lot harder. The easiest thing to do, man, and this is coming from somebody who's been there. The easiest thing to do, man, is just slow roll it. Go ahead and slow roll it so you ain't gotta watch your back. You, well, you always gotta watch your back to a certain extent, but you know what I'm talking about. It's a different level when you're in the game and. You got to watch your back because everywhere you go, everywhere you look, uh, somebody's out to get you and they really trying to get you. So, and there are no rules. And so you're sacrificing your, your life and you're also sacrificing your freedom. You're sacrificing your safety of your family. And it's just so much that come with that. The best thing to do is find out what it is that you do very, very well. What comes 
easy to you that other people find difficult to do and pursue that. Get your money like that. It may take you 10 years to become a millionaire. It may take you 20 years to become a millionaire. But if you do it and you do it right and you put the right plan in place and you put that same tenacity in place that you have on the streets, that same kind of grit, that same grind, that same aggressive nature, stay up the same type of hours, putting in a half a day, at least working every day, you'd be unstoppable. But these corporate dudes couldn't keep up because they ain't built like that. I've heard people say, Lock the drug dealers up. Kill them. They're ruining lives. They kill people. Lock them up. Lock all of them up. Kill them. Okay, let's say that was fair. What are we going to do about the people who sell alcohol? The people who sell tobacco? The people who sell prescription drugs? The people who manufacture prescription drugs? What are we going to do about them? See, that's what I'm talking about, the hypocrisy. See, you ain't even got an answer for that. You don't want to kill them. You don't want to get rid of them. It's cool because they wear suits and they pay taxes for all of the damage that they do. Yeah, I thought so. All of these issues, or many of these issues could be done away with if we were just to legalize drugs. The money spent on incarceration could go toward education and rehabilitation. It would serve us a whole lot better if we did that. Treat all drugs like alcohol and the black market will go away. No more talk. What the lady's is talking about. Damn. Order of protection.